www.computertips.co.nz IT Specialist for your business automation, training or web needs. Hello, my name is Mark Rays, and in this brief video, I'd like to just introduce you to some basic Drupal security. I've noticed a lot of my colleagues are finding Drupal to be an outstanding CMS, and uh, so it's nice to see them using Drupal. But unfortunately, I've also noticed that they're completely oblivious to some of the fundamental security vulnerabilities. All right, let's get started. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I've noted that a lot of people are... Uh, still using the admin login for their Drupal website. Please don't do this. Um, admin is the default login name for Drupal. Um, as soon as you can, get in there and change that. And, you know, all you have to do is go to the Mr. Menu, uh, User Management, Users, Admin, and edit this and change it to something a little bit less um, obvious. Um, include a strong password and you'll be a lot better off. Uh, obviously, brute force attacks are going to start by hitting your admin login and changing that right away is helpful. The next thing that is important is to remind you that um, there, are, uh, there are certain user registration settings that Drupal comes by default with that are not really uh, security beneficial. And one of them is that visitors can create accounts uh, with no administrative approval and that's not a good default uh, setting. So what you want to do is get in there change that and uh, at least for the, the time being when you're trying to launch a website uh, only allow site administrators to create new user accounts and that basically is an approval process that really ensures you don't have uh, vulnerability right from the get-go in terms of users or spam bots creating user accounts another area that comes by default uh, a little bit less than optimally security conscious is the content access controls um, as you create polls or as you create new uh, content modules, often uh, access controls on those for anonymous users are greater than you would wish. So uh, my recommendation is go in there and just allow access for anonymous users to be as limited as possible and that they can't control content in any way. They can't delete polls or delete content pages in any way or modify them. So that's another important uh, facet that uh, I recommend. As you know, your theme uh, has a lot of specific modules and code uh, applied to it. And so another recommendation that I make, especially if you're trying to launch a website, you don't need to be uh, offering multiple themes uh, to users or your user base. Uh, so go in there and just enable the single theme uh, as default. I don't enable additional themes unless there's specific reasons for it. That's a recommendation I make because, again, uh, if you're... Uh, know enough about Drupal, you know that each theme has some of its own vulnerabilities that you should be aware of. And actually, on that same note, let me just take you to uh, another important thing, which is file management. If you allow users to upload files, or for instance, you've created uh, users that are editors and they have rights to upload files uh, for use on the website, which is very handy, but uh, what it does is it uh, comes by default uh, very vulnerable. At least my impression is that it's a little bit more vulnerable than I'd like on a production website uh, that's being used by businesses. So let me explain this a little bit. Um, your default, when you when you configure and you allow the upload module, your default uh, for files uh, puts uploaded files and temporary files under the site's subdirectory. Now, if you're using the multi-site functionality that Drupal offers, this makes a lot of sense, okay? But but if you don't use multi-site functionality, this doesn't make much sense at all because, and I'll remind you, your settings.php file, which contains your Drupal, or I'm sorry, your MySQL database name, login, and password, is all in the clear, and it's located in your settings.php file, which is under the sites subdirectory. So again, if you're going to deal with uploads, my recommendation, as I've done here on this particular production website, is to just create a new unique upload directory at the top level of your website. And as you can see here, this has absolutely nothing to do with the, any of the other theme or module or sites locations. It's separate subdirectory under the HTTP directory. So that's very helpful and I just recommend it. Uh, so just in case you don't know 
why you have your uploads going on these sites. <laughs> That's uh, it's because they're set and configured. Go in there, administrative menu, site configuration, file system, and change that subdirectory. Make sure you create a new directory uh, using your FTP or whatever program you prefer. Now, assuming all your logs are enabled and uh, you frequently check your logs, I have a couple of tips for new Drupal site administrators. Uh, the, one of the most important is to frequently check your top visitors log. Note that uh, some web bots and spam uh, attacks uh, tend to use brute force and they'll show up very easily on these logs when you start to get hits per day. In this particular case, uh, you're getting uh, re regular hits per day from a same type of uh, visitor and they're, they're coming in in droves. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, what you do is you copy that IP address, um, take it and put it into a, like an IP geolocation uh, website uh, such as ip2location.com, which is very good. And that'll tell you, and in this particular example, you'll see that that IP address is actually innocuous. It's a Google web bot that's just coming to visit the website and pick up some content and information. Uh, but other times uh, you're actually dealing with a brute force attack or a brute force uh, hack attempt. And in those situations, you need to make sure to ban that IP address set. Uh, ban any hosts that are obviously uh, brute force attacks. And the way to do that is to go into your administrator menu uh, um, and uh, go into your access rules, I'm sorry, and go from the access rules uh, and set ban. Um, so you can see it here. You can also look at security websites like BotScout. Um, and BotScout does a good job, BotScout.com does a good job of providing some of the latest web bots. And you can see in this particular case in my access rules, I don't uh, only use IP addresses, I'm also using some of the BotScout email addresses that are known uh, web bots. Okay, so under access rules, you can uh, go ahead and add a new rule, uh, deny, um, choose a host, put in the IP address under mask, hit add rule, and you've uh, set that up and you've successfully banned it, okay? So hopefully that'll give you a little bit of tip on that because I've seen a lot of people that are totally oblivious to what you do when these web bots start coming in and uh, attacking your site. All right, the final point I make, I guess the seventh point here on this uh, brief video is that a lot of people like to use the contact forms or polls or other modules. Uh, if you're gonna use the uh, contact module, um, it is recommended that you enable uh, a little bit of higher uh, threshold. So if you go to the contact form itself, uh, the settings of the contact form, uh, you can change the frequency uh, from the uh, use threshold. And if you make it too high, obviously it becomes ineffective. If it's too low, you get a lot of spam. You should consider uh, upgrading to better modules such as the capture module uh, or enhancing this contact form. But uh, for the immediate new Drupal user, at least make sure your hourly threshold is set high enough. I hope that these uh, brief seven tips will make your Drupal use uh, more successful and uh, less security vulnerable, and most importantly, that uh, you have a real enjoyable time using Drupal and, and administering Drupal and not get uh, bogged down by tedious things. Obviously, uh, these tips are no replacement for proper Apache web server settings and good vigilance but hopefully these very basic uh, tips will help new Drupal users to at least establish some security procedures. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope uh, that's of value to you and I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you.